When it comes to finding bias, it can get very frustrated and overcomplicated. And sometimes it can even mess with you mentally because you can't just figure out where price is going. And in this video, I will provide you with a full on guide from A to Z, step by step, on how you can find this bias. And I will also include a top down analysis, daily bias, all the bias, draw on liquidity, previous days high and low, etc. So make sure to watch all the way to the end of this video. The first thing which is essential when it comes to finding the bias is, in my opinion, definitely previous days high and previous days low. And the reason behind this is because when we are using previous days high and previous days low, it can both give us confirmation and also a draw on liquidity. An example of this would be right here where we can see that price made a close above previous days high. And where the price also made a close above, it made a close above these two fair value gaps. So basically, price made a close above previous days high, indicating higher prices. As we know, previous days high can lead to a confirmation that the next day previous days high is also going to be a draw on liquidity. And we can also see that price also provided us with two inversion fair value gaps, which can act as support to then push price higher. And then we can see for the next day, price reached previous days high, but did not make a close above it. So then where is the draw on liquidity now? It is previous days low. Price ran previous days low, did not make a close beneath it, then ran previous days high. Where did price make a close? Make it a close above previous days high. Where do we also see? We can see that price made a close above this inversion for value gap. So when price provides us with two confirmations on whatever price have closed above previous days high and has also closed above a PDRA or a bearish PDRA that can act as resistance. That would just give us double confirmation that price is now willing to move higher going for the next previous days high. And that just keeps going until we reach an important level where a reversal is anticipated. The next very important factor when it comes to figuring out the bias on both the daily and hourly time frame is using a top-down analysis approach. And the way we can do that is starting on the daily time frame. And if you're trading on the five minute and one minute time frame, I would recommend just to be on the four hour and one hour time frame. But using the daily time frame can also be beneficial using previous days high and low as you draw liquidity, as we just discussed in the previous example. Here we can see that on the charts price made a close beneath previous day's low. And what would that indicate? It would indicate that for the next day previous day's low is our draw on liquidity. So now that we have figured out the bias on the daily time frame, we can then drop down into the 4 hour time frame and see what we could be anticipating from there. Down here in the 4 hour time frame, there isn't really that much to see other than we can see the price right here made a close above previous four hour candle and then right here we can see that price did not or failed to make a close above this previous four, four hour candle and we can also use this approach that we're using on the daily time frame on the four hour time frame but now that we have seen that price both failed to make a close above previous days or sorry previous four hour candle and previous lows four hour candle we can then drop down into the one hour time frame and see what is going on there to get more confirmation on where the bias is. Down here on the one hour time frame, we can see that price is on a low resistance liquidity run. As we can see that we have low resistance liquidity right down here and price is starting to run that out. And that means price is mostly bearish as also, if we look over here to the left, bullish PDRAs that previously got respected, as we can see, is now starting to get disrespected. So the bias here is also pretty bearish, lining up with that previous day's low being our draw on liquidity. So let's move down into now the 15 minute time frame. Down here in the 15 minute time frame, we can see that price recently have been delivered from this fair value gap and that price also just ran equal highs as we can see up here. So price on the 15 minute time frame is also pretty bearish and we can see the price made a retracement up into this fair value gap reached the high of this but no further so now where can we be anticipating the draw liquidity to be at it could be at the previous day's low so let's just zoom in and see what happens now 
and we can indeed see that Favaligat Delivery turns out to be a sweep or a run on that previous day's low. And that occurred right around 9.30. The next thing that we're going to talk about is called a draw on liquidity, which is a, a very important factor when it comes to finding out bias. And I have already mentioned a bit in the previous examples. And a draw on liquidity is basically where we think price is most likely going to reach for within a specific area. And I have drawn out what I think is the four most important areas where there lies most liquidity and which you could call the strongest draw on liquidity. And the first one being low resistance liquidity. And low resistance liquidity is basically when we have a kind of trend line where retail traders see this as support. So then they're going to long at this area, put their stop loss beneath the low, and then there's going to be gathered a lot of liquidity around that area. And smart money is going to target this liquidity. And that's why we call it low resistance liquidity. And as we can see, we have gathered this trend line. So we could be anticipating stop loss to be gathered beneath these lows, right? So then where is the draw on liquidity? It is most likely going to be beneath these lows. So then we're going to target these lows, which is called low resistance liquidity, and that being our draw on liquidity. That is the first example. The second example is equal highs, as retail traders usually see this area as resistance. And when they see this area as resistance, there's going to be gathered stop loss above this area, right? So then smart money is going to maybe reach down into an important level, or just go straight towards these equal highs. And this also counts for equal lows, of course. Next factor is called external and internal range liquidity. And external and internal range liquidity is basically when price reach external range liquidity, then the draw liquidity becomes internal range liquidity. And when prices have reached internal range liquidity, then the draw liquidity becomes external range liquidity. As we know, price moves from external to internal, and then internal to external range liquidity. And if you don't know most of these ICC concepts, then I've made a video about all of them. So I would definitely recommend checking that out. And the third example being previous days low, as I already mentioned, or previous days high or low. And basically, that is because previous days high or low, price usually targets, as we know, when price have made a close beneath previous days low. So let's say we have the second day right here, price made a close beneath that previous days low. Then we know the next draw on liquidity then becomes the previous days low again. So that's also a very important draw on liquidity to notice. The first example where we're going to talk about draw on liquidity on the charts would be the equal highs. And right here we can see that we have identical equal highs up here. And usually we have just relative equal highs where the highs are very close. But when we have identical equal highs, that usually leads to price reaching at that area either very fast or just being a draw on liquidity for later. And here we can indeed see that price went a bit lower, sweeping some some of degree of social liquidity after that ran those equal highs. So usually when price creates these equal highs and equal lows, we can either anticipate them to be ran right after they were created, or we could see price make a retracement maybe into a premium or a discount, and then after that reach the equal highs or lows. The next very important role on liquidity would be the low resistance liquidity. And right here we can see that we can draw out this kind of trend line right here and also over here, as we can see. So then we know there's going to be gathered stop losses at this area. And that means smart money is going to target the low resistance liquidity. As we know, retail traders are going to see the low resistance liquidity or the trend line going to act as support, but smart money is going to target this area, right? So then another thing that we could see is that price is currently trading up within this internal range liquidity, as we can see right here. So then we know that when price reaches up into internal range liquidity, then external range liquidity becomes the draw on liquidity. And knowing that we have low resistance liquidity and this low down here, or this low over here to the left, would be considered, considered as external range liquidity, right? So now we already have two areas where price is most likely going to draw towards. 
So for this example, price is really bearish, as we know. And we can also see, if we were to pair this strong liquidity with a little trade entry, we have this IFEG, made a retracement, then after that just distributed lower, running out all that low resistance liquidity and reaching the external range liquidity after delivering from the internal range liquidity. So that's another way we can use to draw on liquidity to our advantage. The last important draw on liquidity was the previous day's high and previous day's low. And I did already cover this in the start of the video, but just to give you a short resume of what this really is, I'm just going to show you a short example. Now we know when price sweeps previous day's high or previous day's low, or runs previous day's high, previous day's low, we have to notice where price makes a close. And if price makes a close beneath previous day's low, then previous day's low the next day becomes a draw on liquidity. An example of this was right here, as I talked about before. Price, as we can see, made a close beneath previous day's low. Then where's the draw on liquidity now? Previous day's low. And again, we see where's the draw on liquidity now? Previous day's low as we just keeps closing beneath previous day's low. Suddenly we can see price do not reach any of the previous day's low or previous day's high. Just a consolidation candle. Then we wait for one of the sides of the previous previous days highs and lows to be ran and here we can see price made a close above previous days or previous previous days high and previous days high and now that just keeps going previous days high previous days low and it all just depends on where price makes a close now if we were to pair everything together then we just have to go up here on the daily time frame as first, we have to recognize where the draw on liquidity is, right? And here for this example, we can see that we have equal lows. Right here, as we can see, we have this major sell side liquidity. And then we also have perfect or relative equal lows. And paired with that, we also have some low resistance liquidity. So already, the bias looks very clear that the draw on liquidity is lower and when we know where the draw liquidity is, we also know where the bias is, right? So that's the first very important factor that we already have checked off is where is the draw on liquidity. And if we have to use the top down analysis approach, then we also have to go down into the four hour time frame. Now that we know where the draw liquidity is on the daily time frame. And we can also just use the previous day slow as an example, as previous day slow in this case, as we know the draw liquidity is lower then should previous day's low also be. So now let's drop down into the 4-hour time frame now that we know on the daily time frame the bias is bearish. Down here on the 4-hour time frame, if we just zoom out, we can see that we have the major sell side liquidity, the equal lows, the low resistance liquidity, and also previous day's low. A lot of draw on liquidities here. And we can also see that price is currently trading within this fair value gap. But if we just draw out a Fibonacci tool from this high, down to previous day's low, we can then see that this Fibonacci gap is not nested within a premium. But if we take a closer look up within the premium of the range, we can then see we have a Fibonacci gap paired with an inversion Fibonacci gap. So it would make more sense for price reaching up into this area to fill more orders to then send price lower, reaching our draw on liquidity, right? So then let's see what happens. And right here, we can indeed see price reach up into this level and also created an inversion for value gap. But it doesn't really matter as this for value gap is not within a premium, it's within a discount. And now we should see a strong reaction from this for value gap that is nested within a premium. As we can see, price failed to make a close above the equilibrium of the range and also failed to make a close within this for value gap. So now let's drop down into the one hour time frame. Here on the one hour time frame, we can see that price is really starting to be bearish as that delivery from the four hour fair value gap is starting to kick in because price is currently reaching low resistance liquidity, meaning that price is on a low resistance liquidity run. Also disrespecting bullish PDA race, which was used as support before reaching up into that fair value gap. And by the way, we could actually use this fair value gap or look at this fair value gap as internal range liquidity. And where would the external range liquidity now be? It would be the previous day's low. So we ha actually have all the draw on liquidities we mentioned before. And we're currently combining everything together that I mentioned at the daily time frame, right? 
So now that we can see the price is starting to really be bearish here on the one hour time frame, let's drop down into the 15 minute time frame. Here in the 15 minute time frame, we can see that if we just zoom out, price is bearish as we just talked about before. And that we have our drawn liquidities down here. So let's just play price through and see what happens. Right here, we can see price run the previous day's low. And now we can see price made a retracement up into this fair rally gap. And if we are really bearish, this fair rally gap should act as resistance and we could be anticipating lower prices. And then right after that, the fair rally gap delivery, we can see price made a large down close candle to the downside, sweeping that low resistance liquidity as we talked about before, equal lows, external range liquidity, and the major sell side liquidity. If we were to go down into the one minute time frame and look at what happened when price made the retracement going up into that 15 minute fair value gap, we can then see that price or a trade entry could be found. As right after price swept previous days low, then most of us would think that price were mostly bullish, right? But then if we take a closer look, we can see made the retracement into that 15 minute fair value gap and then started to disrespect bullish PDA race. And we don't want to see that if we're bullish, right? And also an example of this would be this fair value gap. As we can see, price made a close beneath it. Internal range liquidity has not yet been swept. So this could be a potential trade entry, right? A trade entry could be placed. Stop loss or exit trade entry when price makes a close above the IFG and then target potentially the draw on liquidity or just target the internal range liquidity or place your stop loss at break even when price reach that internal range liquidity. So a trade entry could be found within this leg going up into that 50 minute fair value gap, going down sweeping our draw on liquidity, which we had on the daily and four hour time frame.